Hello students. Now we begin with unit four, that is the specific laser systems. The section B and section C carry questions of uh, long marks uh, like uh, 7 or 10 where you are given a general question like discuss atomic lasers in detail or here in your syllabus they have given atomic uh, gas lasers, they have given uh, the atomic ones are helium neon, argon ion, molecular gas lasers. And the liquid lasers under which they are expecting you to study organic dye lasers. The solid state laser is the ruby laser and the semiconductor diode lasers. So let us begin. See, laser system, how do we differentiate between gaseous lasers, liquid lasers, solid state lasers or the semiconductor diode lasers? We differentiate between them by seeing what is the active material. If the active material here is in a gaseous state, then we will say that it is a gas laser. And the most famous one is your carbon dioxide laser or the helium Leon laser. The output frequency of these laser beams going to range from your ultraviolet to visible to infrared regions. Now, gas lasers, that is most common one is helium neon. The few advantages, if you ask, they are that they have better optical quality. They are very highly monochromatic. They have better coherence property. And the uh, ionic lasers are the argon ion and krypton ion, the molecular carbon dioxide, nitrogen, excimer, metal vapor, helium, cadmium, copper vapor, and gold vapor lasers. So most of the lasers are optically pumped, but for gas lasers, Optical pumping is not really uh, is inefficient because gas lasers are characterized by sharp energy levels rather than energy bands which we get in the solid state laser. So let us begin with helium neon laser. Lot of exams have asked helium neon laser in detail up to 10 mark question. So helium neon comes under the category of gas lasers because helium and neon are the two noble gases which have been used in the active medium. And helium neon laser operates in a very good continuous mode and they have restricted to low power operation to maintain population inversion. That is the number of atoms in the excited state are supposed to be more than that in the ground state. So electrical discharge method is used to get population inversion. Now, helium neon laser. See, helium neon laser has a mixture of helium and neon gas in it. The ratio of this mixture can be of helium and neon is 10 is to 1 or 7 is to 1, but you have to take it at a low pressure. It is a four level laser. Its output is in the continuous waveform and it is light comparatively much better than a three-level laser or a ruby laser. Now have a look at the experimental setup. Look at this tube where helium neon gas mixture has been filled. Here is the cathode, here is the anode which are supplying the power supply to it and because of collision, population inversion keeps happening inside the tube and the, we get no cooling is required here. Output we get in the form of laser beam. And here the energy level diagram, if you look at C, helium, neon, they collide and absorption process takes place to the excited state. After that, metastable state comes into being and from metastable state to ground state falling gives us laser light. So once again, 
this is uh, the excited atoms collide with neon atoms and transfer their energy to neon atom, which again get excited. Population inversion condition in these lasers is maintained all the time. This is a very good part about it. Because of this reason, because the atoms of helium and neon are colliding continuously, hence atoms stay in the excited state. And this gives us a continuous output of laser beam. Whereas in ruby laser, this does not happen because it is a solid state laser where we have to continuously uh, proceed with the population inversion work. So the biggest advantage of helium neon laser or gas laser is that it is very easy to operate. Output is in the form of a continuous beam. Low power supply also, it is going to work. It gives a good monochromatic unidirectional beam but only drawback of laser helium neon laser is that it is a low power laser so you cannot use it for high power where you require high power uh, work and the best use of helium neon laser see in hologram imaging because hologram is a 3d image then in optical fiber communication you can also use it in barcode reading because it is very lightweight helium neon laser. Next are the ionic lasers. As you can see from the very word ionic, that means that operate in ionized species of the rare gases such as argon, neon, krypton and xenon which have been used as an active medium. They are going to use the ionized forms of the Nobel gas. They will operate in the visible and ultraviolet region. They also give us a very good continuous wave. And, but the drawback is that they require high pumping power because of the ionization in order to achieve population inversion. One more thing, they here require water cooling system because large amount of heat is generated, whereas in helium neon laser, you do not require any cooling system. So argon ion lasers are providing us visible region wavelength uh, spectrum, and they are operating at low pressure and uh, high temperature also is required here. And the excitation of these ions can be done by population inversion, either electron collisions with metastable state ions or the electronic collisions. This maintains the population inversion. One very good form for ionic laser is that they are providing us multiple wavelengths, high output power. They are the output beam is very less divergent. Advantages, uh, disadvantages, etc., are all same for argon laser, krypton laser, or any of these ionic forms. Similarities between argon ion and krypton neon is that they both are using a rare gas. Both lasers. Uh, are using similar power supply but in krypton the gain is less in argon gain is more transitions in krypton are less transitions in argon ion are more here lower voltage krypton laser can operate whereas high voltage is required in argon laser and the strongest transition in krypton is red color argon ion is red and green so what is the difference between krypton laser and argon ion laser that is we have discussed and then let, let us quickly see this type of comparisons always come in the long questions that compare helium neon laser with the ionic or the argon ion krypton lasers. So in helium neon we see that it is occurring due to transition of atoms whereas in the ionic laser it occurs because of ions of atoms. Helium neon laser, very small current is required. Krypton laser, large current is required. Helium neon laser, 
heat it produced is less that is why it do not require a cooling system it is argon ion laser large heat is produced gain in helium neon laser is depending on the diameter of the tube whereas argon krypton ion laser gain is depending on the power and helium neon laser does not require any cooling system whereas argon krypton ion laser requires a cooling system